Happy Sabbath, everyone. Okay. Thank you for your story. And the one thing I noticed with Ann telling the story, if you remember uh, two Sabbaths ago when I was here preaching, actually, I need to go back on my, let's see. Okay. When I was preaching about passion and how passionate we could be or need to be for the gospel of Christ. And I could sense Anne's passion in her story. And I really appreciate that. Do you believe that God is passionate? Amen. Amen. We know God is passionate. And he's passionate about his word that he really wants us to know the future. So we're going to talk a little bit about the book of Revelation, a lot about the book of Revelation, and I'll mention Daniel a few times. But it's something that he wants us to know about. And so we're going to talk a little bit about it this morning. In fact, let's start with a morning worth of prayer. Heavenly Gracious Father, we want to thank you for this beautiful sunshine that you have given us. But most importantly, thank you for your Bible. Thank you for your word that we have sunshine as we read it. It's not all doom and gloom, and it's laced with an incredible amount of love. And all this we pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. I do got one quick announcement I want to make, and that is we have our annual church picnic on Sabbath, July 15th at the Great Plains Park right after the worship service. We hope you can come to that. Bring your, your, fa bring your friends, bring your, your next-door neighbors, bring your enemies, whoever you want. Bring them and come and join this wonderful church picnic that we'll have. We like to eat, don't we? Amen. I do. I'm not afraid to admit it. All right. Let's move on. And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people. And the reason why I brought that up as the first scripture to read is that there's a lot of organizations out there, a lot of Christian organizations out there that you, you won't hear them talk about the three angels' messages. And, of course, there's one organization in particular that, that does preach about it. Now, we don't preach about 14.6 and Revelation every single Sabbath. In fact, I don't bring it up an awful lot. There's so much to, to talk about, to preach about, that God at least inspires me and the speakers to, to share with everyone. But we do need to talk a little bit about Revelation 14, verse 6. In fact, lightning struck St. Peter's Dome at the Vatican on February 11th, 2013, just a few hours after Pope Benedict XVI made a shocking announcement that he would resign as the leader of the world's 1.2 billion Catholics. Some witnesses were left wondering if it was just a, a passing event or a, a weather event or a sign from heaven. There's a lot of signs happening, and there's going to be a lot more signs occurring that God would like us to really pay attention to as he says, I am coming soon. And he's doing that for a reason. How many here are parents? Most of us here are parents. Have we or have you as parents ever had to, had to say anything to your children that may not be warm, fuzzy news kind of stuff? Okay. All right. We all have had to do that. God does that too. We do it because we love our children, right? And we want them to know some things in life may not always be very pleasant. It's important that they know that. And we, you know, I don't feel that I would have been a good father 
or Charlene would be a good mother if we didn't share some of that with our kids as they were growing up. Well, God does that too for us, his children. He is our father, and he does tell us some things in his word that are not going to be very pleasant. But the God that we serve is a God of love. And just like we tell some things to our kids out of love, he tells us, his children, some things always with love. And I'm glad we serve a loving father. Amen? Amen. So let's, let's learn a little bit more why, why do we preach on Daniel and Revelation? Why do we put a lot of emphasis on these two books? Unexpected, shocked, without warning. That is how many responded to a startling announcement on, on a Monday, February 18th, 2013, by Pope Benedict XVI, that he would resign by the end of February. While many Americans realize that a change of presidents will impact our political world during a brief four-year term, few consider a change of popes to have a global spiritual representation that could have a global spiritual repercussion, I should say, for years to come. Well, during a meeting of Vatican, or Vatican Cardinals on February 11th, the Pope read a statement that surprised many. And I'm going to read directly from his words. And some of them I had to even look up because there's some big words in what he said. I have convoked you to this consistory not only for the three canonizations, but also to communicate to you a decision of great importance for the life of the church. After having repeatedly examined my conscience before God, I have come to the certainty that my strengths, due to an advanced age, are no longer suited to an adequate exercise of the patrine ministry. And, you know, I give him a lot of credit for realizing that he, doesn't, he did not feel comfortable to continue to lead the 1.2 billion Catholics that are out there. And the news did capture the attention of the world. It has been about 600 years since a pope resigned from office. Gregory XII in 1415 stepped aside in order to end the Great Western Schism. The response among Catholics has been one of astonishment. Many Catholics were taken aback by the decision. Stun's leadership. The Pope took us by surprise. This was a huge shock to the church. Archbishop Vincent Nichols of England and Wales said the announcement shocked and surprised everyone. Now, I remember that when it happened. Revelation 14, 7 says, saying with a loud voice, fear God, and that's not with trepidation. That word fear is not with trepidation and, 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 and scaredness. It's reverence and holiness. Okay? Because remember, we don't serve a cosmic monster. We serve someone. We serve a, a God that loves us so very much. And give glory to him. For the hour of his judgment is what? Is come, okay? And worship him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of waters. Amen? Then again, there are those who say maybe this wasn't such a total surprise from Pope Benedict. Some Vatican insiders are suggesting everyone knew all along that Pope Benedict would be a temporary bridge to provide time to groom a younger, more charismatic pope who could carry forward the Catholic agenda for the next generation. Pope Benedict's Latin red words were quick, quickly translated and they ricocheted all around the world. The Washington Post reports that the pope, who was nicknamed God's Rottweiler, explained that both strength of mind and body are necessary Strength which in the last few months has deteriorated in me 
to the extent that I have had to recognize my incapacity to adequately fulfill the ministry entrusted to me. He was at that time 85 years old. He was the fourth oldest pope to ever live. And then soon Pope Francis, the current pope today, was voted in at the age of 75, 76 years of age. Now, Revelation 14, 8 tells us, And there followed another angel, saying, Babylon has fallen, has fallen, that great city, because she made all the nations drink of the wine of wrath of her fornication. As we near the close of history, of Earth's history, it is worth our time to reflect on spiritual movements, not just movements in the Catholic Church, but movements in any and every organization out there. It's very important that we pay close attention to the signs. The signs are there, and they're for us to know, okay? Students of the Bible should sit up and lean into prophetic passages of Scripture that describe events to take place just before Jesus comes. Every time there's going to be an event that's going to affect us here on this earth, God always forewarns us, always sends a warning, always, and his word prepares us for what's to come. We try to do that with our kids, prepare them for things that might come into their life by sharing with them some things that could happen. Well, with God, things do happen, and they happen right on time. And so we, we want to heed what he tells us in the Word of God, even if it kind of rubs us, uh, rubs us wrong, perhaps, in the wrong way. Even if we get this little jab in our side that says, ooh, that stings just a little bit. I have had more conversions sitting where you guys are sitting over the years when the speaker would speak some things that really made me move in my pew. But they were said so that I needed to make some changes in my own character. So it's all good. It's a good thing to have that happen. So how might the change of leadership in the Catholic Church relate to end time events? Does the fixed attention of many people in the world on the Pope relate to prophecy? Well, the book of Revelation tells us that religious and political powers will unite before Christ's coming to enforce an agenda that will culminate with compulsory, with compulsory, or I should say with mandatory, worship. It will be a time of signs and wonders mingled with deception and confusion, except for those who are determined to follow the Bible. And this is a good time to study more carefully the scriptures. The only foundation to keep us firm during times when there are surprising moves. Many of you may have heard of this commercial. Kind of dates me now. It was uh, very heavy in the 70s and early 80s. The brokerage firm E.F. Hutton engineered probably perhaps one of the most indelible advertising campaigns in the late 1970s and early 80s. Do you remember what, <laughs> what his catchphrase was? I can just picture some of the commercials now. When E.F. Hutton speaks, everybody listens. His commercials depicted people out for a jog, aboard a train, at a dinner party, or even theater directors conversing offstage amid a, a ruckus Shakespearean sword fight. The conversation would inevitably turn to the stock market. And that's when one person would say to the other, my broker is E.F. Hutton. And E.F. Hutton says, and they listen. Those words were like uttering, uttering an, uh, some sort of incantation. Once said, the rest of the world would fall silent. Joggers would halt in mid-stride. Commuters on board of the train would put down their newspapers. 
Dinner guests would cease passing the green bean casserole. Even the clinging swords of theatric duelists would stop. Everything came to a screeching halt. For everyone clamored to hear the sage advice of the legendary E.F. Hunton. Well, the commercials have all ended, and they all ended with the same poignant tag line. When E.F. Hutton talks, people listen. Let's go back to the Bible. Oops, I'm going to go back. And the third angel, what number angel? Third, followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image, and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand. This is true of God's two prophets, Daniel and John, also known as John the Revelator. There are some organizations out there that won't teach from the book of Revelation because they say it's too hard to understand. Yet, Revelation means what? Revealing of whom? Of Jesus. The revealing of Jesus. It is part of the gospel message. It's to teach us about Christ. When these two men of God speak, we must listen to what they have to say. Because it is a matter of life and death. Again, do we not share some things with our children because we want them to live? But there's some things in life they need to know that could hurt them tremendously if they aren't aware of it. God does the same with us. And I feel so good when I can, I, not good, well, good, I do feel good, but I feel very humbled when I can exclaim, or exclaim, or exclaim I can't even pronounce that English word too well, when I can say to myself, I am a child of God. We are children of God. Amen is right. Amen. We serve a powerful, loving, merciful God, don't we? And it makes me feel good to say that I am one of God's children. I feel humbled. I don't feel worthy. But we are God's children. Well, Revelation 14.10 goes on to tell us that the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and the presence of the lambs. That doesn't sound too warm and fuzzy, though, does it? To, must, to most of us today... The Bible books of Daniel and Revelation sound incomprehensibly strange and puzzling. Like maybe verse 10. Totally unlike the books and magazines and the newspapers that we normally read. They are filled with fantastic symbols. But actually, the bewildering symbols and epic overtones that make Daniel and Revelation so different were a fairly common literary style in the days that Daniel and John wrote. This kind of writing is called apocalyptic. So let's look again, or not look again, let's look at some of the characteristics of apocalyptic writing. What are some of the characteristics of this kind of writing? Number one, I'm going to share four of them. This kind of writing always focuses on the what? On the future. Daniel and Revelation deal with the ongoing struggle between good and evil, between God and Satan. And as it is played out from eternity past to eternity future. How many of you have seen on TV once in a while? You may have seen, I've seen it a lot more when I was younger, but um, there's an 
uh, a good angel on one shoulder and there's a bad angel on the other shoulder. It's one of Satan's angels. And those two angels are battling for your mind. They're battling for people's minds. The, God's angel wants, wants you in God's camp and Satan's angel wants you in Satan's camp. That is so true. That is the number one battle that we all are confronted with between good and evil. And it's very important for us to share that with people, that there is an evil force out there that's very evil that wants your soul more than anything. So we want, so God has sent a warning to his children to be careful and know who this evil force is. Number two. This kind of writing is based on dreams and visions. Anybody here ever had a dream or a vision that you knew was right from God? And don't be afraid to put your hand up because God talks to us that way sometimes. All right? And there's going to be more of that as the days get closer. Daniel and John received visions and talk with angels. Number three, this kind of writing uses symbols to convey its message. Quite often you will hear preachers say what is literal in the Old Testament becomes symbolic in the New. These two Bible books are filled with symbols and they are almost always things that don't exist in real life, such as animals with many heads, dragons, stars falling on earth, etc., but God wants us to understand what they are. And he tells us. And number four, this kind of writing views the earth and the universe in a very certain way. It sees the universe in terms of two opposing powers, God and Satan, good and evil. The present age is largely controlled by Satan and evil at this time. The future age will be controlled by God and righteousness. Amen? Amen. I was just on, we were, Charlie and I were just on Zoom last night having um, a wonderful conversation with some people. And, you know, there's... There's a lot going on in this world. And there's a lot of things happening subliminally that Satan is working on to try to get in here. Messages that are pretty satanic. And a lot of that is happening through media. Yep, media. Our phones, our computers, our, our iPads. And there's a lot of mind control with some of these things. Is it inherently bad to have Facebook or Snapchat and all that? No, it's not. It's just like when TV first came out, it was looked upon as bad. But aren't there good things that do actually get put on TV? I know our, our awesome Adventist church uses that media to get the word of the gospel out. And many people are, tu are tuning into a lot of those programs and have come to know Christ. But with these four characteristics in mind, we can study Daniel and Revelation without feeling quite so lost. Even so, we shouldn't be discouraged if we don't understand every detail. It isn't necessary to do so in order to understand what these books are trying to tell us. God has given us these prophecies so that we can understand where we are in the stream of history and to assure us that he will soon put an end to sin and suffering. Amen? I so can't wait for that time to come. And the older I get, the more I can't wait. I'm really not looking forward to this campaign. That's about ready to get started. And that's why I don't, I don't preach on politics, nor will I preach on politics. All I know is it can get pretty ugly. And I'll be glad when it's over with, because it just turns people into people.
people that we don't like to see. Revelation 14, 11. However, we need to really pay very close attention to politics. Because politics are prophetic. God puts people in leadership positions for a reason. And so we have to pay close attention to politics. Doesn't mean we have to necessarily partake in the cantor that they use. But we need to be careful and we need to watch the signs. Revelation 14, 11. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and they have no rest day or night who worship the beast and his image and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. Daniel was born in Judah at around 622 B.C. And he was a young man at the time when he was taken captive into Babylon in the year 605, 606 uh, B.C. Babylon was located in the, on the river Euphrates, close to the site of, modern, of the modern city of Baghdad in Iraq. And it was located in a flat valley between the Tigris and the Euphrates rivers, known as the land between the rivers. Let's read this one out loud, so I don't have to do all the talking. Let's start with, here is... So why do you think Christ in this verse says, here is the patience of the saints? What do you think he means here? What's that? The long suffering that we're going through, the waiting, the anticipation. I mean, there's a lot that people are going through. And he also shares, I'm not going to go all into it today, but there's some things, some very serious things that are going to be happening that have yet to occur, but they will. But patience is just that, being patient. There's coming a day that you will be so glad that you hung in there with Christ. You'll look, you'll look back and you'll say a big hearty amen. Thank you, Lord, for sharing this with me. And we don't want to hoard the, the facts to ourselves. We want to share those with other people because we want other people to also be in heaven, right? Absolutely. Amen is right. So the author of the book of Revelation identifies himself simply as John, and he is writing to the Christians in the Roman province of Asia, while on Patmos, a small rocky island in the Asian Sea. And it served as a kind of a labor camp, which the Roman authorities sent offenders, like an ancient Alcatraz. The time frame for this is during the reign of Roman Emperor Domitian, A.D. 81 to 96. And while on Patmos, John received the visions of Revelation, which he was instructed to write on a scroll and send as a pastoral letter to the churches in Asia. So how can we make sense of our chaotic world? Because we live in a world of political and financial unrest, social injustice, increasing natural disasters, and changing culture. And Bible prophecy not only specifically and accurately predicted our time, but it also explains what will happen in the future. Jesus assures us hope. What word? Hope. Joy. What word? Joy. Security. What word? Security. And peace. What word? Peace. Jesus assures us hope, joy, security, and peace as we understand from him personally what lies ahead. So can we understand prophecy? And I, I know a lot, of, a lot of new Christians, you know, it, it takes time to understand prophecy. It took me a long time to understand prophecy. So that's why I'm glad God is patient with me. 
Bible prophecy is often misunderstood and misapplied, which leaves many people confused or fearful. But when the Bible is studied in its proper context, prophecy becomes clear and understandable. There is no one we can trust more than Jesus, and his words will speak specifically to us as we study them in simplicity. The book of Revelation. Bible prophecy is God's message to our generation living in the last days. But it, it is also a revelation of the person at the heart of every prophecy, which is Jesus Christ. He is at the heart of every prophecy. As we study the Bible, Christ will reveal the true source of hope for our lives and a loving assurance of his future plans for you and for me. Revelation 22, and I'll just read it from here, 7 through 10 says, Do not seal the words of the prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. Behold, I am coming quickly. That book was sealed in Daniel's time, but it, it is now open in our time to understand. Amen? I mean, I, God is not going to keep things from us that, we, that he doesn't want us to know. And there's a lot he wants us to know. And I appreciate that of my God. So, in, as we wind down, those three angels. And did you know there's a fourth angel? Mm -hmm. There's other angels that we'll talk about sometime. But we're just concentrating on three right now. Revelation 14. The first angel, and it says, appears in the heavens and has the everlasting gospel to preach to those who dwell on the earth. Preach to who? To people. Are we people? We're people. We're human beings. The gospel message is to be preached to every single person on earth. And announces that the hour of his judgment has come. Which means we, we're in judgment right now. But don't look at that as trepidation. It doesn't have to be. If we're in Christ, let's be joyful. And calls on men and women everywhere to worship him who made heaven and earth, the sea, and the springs of water. Who made earth? God. And in the near future, earth will one day be heaven. The second angel follows the first and cries out, Babylon has fallen. Babylon represents religious confusion and the powers opposed to God. Babylon falls on a result of her false doctrines and teachings. So there's some false teachings going on out there. And we need to understand who's behind it and what they're teaching. And match that up with the Bible teaching. You match everything in life to what the Bible teaches. Everything. Does the right message make a difference to God? It does. It does. There are many people that are going to come out of other organizations or who are going to learn about Christ right up front and come on God's side. There are people who are going to be in heaven in every single denomination there is. The third angel. Lastly, the last of the heavenly truths.
going to tell us who that is. He's going to tell us who that is. And it's not a person. It's a principality. Okay? And that principality is going to, and it's already starting, going to join together with a political power. And for some of you who may not have studied Revelation or Daniel, you may be very surprised with what you'll learn. I know I was. But I thank God for sharing his truth. So can we understand prophecy? Amen. How can we make sense of our chaotic world? Can we understand that? Do we like it? No. No, I was watching the news this week, and I was curious if, you know, the Senate and House and all of them were going to vote on that ceiling bill thing. So we don't go into debt, which we already are. But it could, have, it could have had some catastrophic repercussions for us if it didn't go through. But there is coming a time that it won't go through. And we'll see things like we've never seen before. But the good news about that is Jesus is coming. And he's going to relieve us of this pain. Yes, we can understand prophecy. Yes, we can make sense of our chaotic world. King Jesus is in and at the heart of every prophecy. Amen? And he specifically says, do not seal the words of the prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. Behold, He's coming in a very long time. Ooh, good, you guys are listening. He's coming how soon? Quickly. Quickly. I keep getting told I need to be right here in front of the mic. Thank you. <clears throat> Love our AV team. And they have... They do a tremendous job and have done a tremendous job with getting our AV system up to par. Praise the Lord for them. So, some things are coming down the pike. Yes, we're going to talk a little bit about that this fall. And there's a lot of things we're going to talk about, but these are things that pertain to the three angels' message. The three angels' message is just that. It's the message of the gospel. Amen? And the message of the gospel is love. Is love. And I can't emphasize that enough. We love our children, but sometimes we have to tell them some things that may not be warm and fuzzy. And God's going to say the same thing. He's going to tell us some things that may not be warm and fuzzy, but they will be warm and fuzzy because we know who they're coming from and that we have nothing to worry about. Right, Steve? No worrying. Kind of an inside thing he and I have got. Well, let's pray. Heavenly Gracious Father, we want to thank you for this very important message, just a, a primer with what's going to be coming down the road. And Father, we, we just, you know, so appreciate you being very open and upfront with your children. And that we have a very important message. You have a very important message that you're going to be working through us to get out to the world to let people know. There's only a few places, just a few places yet unentered with your gospel message, believe it or not, on this earth. So soon, so very soon, your message will be throughout the entire world. So Father, continue to give us patience because many of us are, are tired of the way the world is right now, but we know that there's more stuff that we have to persevere through, so give us, continue to give us your patience. But Father, continue to pour out your amazing love, your amazing grace, and your amazing mercy on each and every one of us. 
We love you, dear Jesus, and we look forward to when you break through those great clouds of heaven and take us home to be with you forever and ever. And all this we pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. <laughs>